So as Timur said, I'm, I'm Glenn, and I'm from the Android Audio Group. And it used to be that I gave presentations like this, and I would say, I'm Glenn from Android Audio, and I focus on performance, and that means latency. And I don't say that anymore. <laughs> the reason is because uh, certainly latency has gotten uh, reduced on Android. Um, we're now in about the 15 to 16 millisecond round trip range on our best devices. Uh, and one way, like output is about 10 milliseconds on our best devices and five or six one way on the audio input side. Um, so we're still not at the magical 10 millisecond round trip uh, range, but we're getting closer. Um, the reason I don't talk about, uh, I don't introduce myself as, as Mr. Latency anymore is because I've hit a new problem. And that problem is jitter and what it results in, which is glitches. And so that's what I'm going to talk about today. Uh, this is actually one talk in two parts. So about halfway through, I'm going to switch decks. And please don't leave the room, but give us about 15 seconds. Uh, Fabian's going to help me switch decks. Um, so hmm, OK, that didn't change. Let's see. Maybe I need to be on the right screen. Let's try that. That did it, OK. Um, so first of all, I'm so glad that I came right after the Bella talk. How many of you were here for Bella? Excellent, OK. You all will understand what I'm talking about. The rest of you, I'll try to fill in. Basically, Bella is a, a real-time Unix, I'm sorry, real-time Linux platform uh, that's built with custom hardware and a custom uh, sort of almost like hypervisor b below Linux. And during this talk, I talk um, I feel like Bella really motivates this talk. It, it kind of shows what the, the point of it is. You know, wh why would you want to do the things I'm, t I'm talking about here? Um, so first of all, the ideal CPU for audio. This is like my favorite CPU. Um, first of all, it would have a known bandwidth, whatever that is. Like if it's 400 megahertz or 800 megahertz or 2 gigahertz, whatever it is, you would know what it is. Second of all, that clock rate would stay stable. It would never change. Even when you release the sustain pedal, it would be there all the time so that then when you, when you hit that crashing chord, it's ready for you with no glitching. And the execution pipeline would be predictable. So uh, there would be no caches, no out of order execution with you know, uh, unpredictable uh, execution times, things like that. And the result of all this is very predictable performance, which means no glitches. And that's, I think, what we all want in audio. So that's the ideal CPU. Uh, th and the operating system that would go along with that, that would support that CPU, is, first of all, it would wake me up exactly on time. In the case of Bella, we had it waking us up every two samples. Personally, I don't need it to wake me up quite that often but even every two or three milliseconds would be great as long as it's exactly on time. I don't want it to ever be late. And it would provide me with just the few simple services I need, which for the, the core real-time audio really is basically just memory and memory allocation and some sort of inter-process communication or IPC to the rest of the system. Beyond that, I really can handle everything myself <coughs> as long as I have the perfect CPU to go along with it. And other than that, it completely gets out of the way. It's as if I don't even see an operating system there. Now, for you in the room, what kind of operating system am I describing here? Shout out. No. Exactly, no operating system. <laughs> That's the perfect operating system. Uh, it would give me glitch-free audio. And that no operating system, unfortunately, is not what we have. Thing. at least in the Android land and in certain other lands too. We have uh, you know, a Linux or, or, or some kind of equivalent operating system. And we'll get to it in just a minute about what, what that results in, the fact that we're so far away from the ideal. Uh, first of all, I'm gonna talk about um, what, the, the, what those ideal CPU and ideal operating system can result in in terms of our um, performance that we can measure. So first of all, first of all for the CPU, we would have flat bandwidth, whatever that is, whether it's 400, 600, 800, it doesn't really matter what it is because we can tune our algorithms, we can tune our voice count to match it. We just need to know what the bandwidth is and have it be stable over time. And then 
In terms of our task wake up, remember I wanted every task to wake up exactly on time. This is a histogram from a real Android device. It's hard to believe, but it's a real device over one hour. And we can see that over one hour, we got about a million task wake ups that were three milliseconds and one that was one millisecond late at four. So that's pretty darn close to ideal. Unfortunately, this is not typical. So at this point, I'm going to bring up my friend. Come on up, please. Can you introduce yourself, please? My name is Toko Malazani. So Toko and I decided to do something a little bit different today. Since this is a music conference or audio conference, we're going to sing for you. <laughs> 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 we're, uh, this is a song I wrote just a couple of days ago. Um, and it's an analogy. Um, I think of my perfect CPU, my, my perfect operating system, as like the perfect waiter. Okay, in this case, Tux, the waiter. And uh, he's always there. He's always ready for me whenever I need him. But other than that, he gets out of the way. Okay? <laughs> so we're going to sing now. Let me start the, um, you know what? Here, you hold the mic so I can play keyboards. Okay? And this is meant to be sung in a very plaintive, mournful tone, and so any off-key notes you hear are deliberate. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, oh, here's the C, okay, okay. I need a waiter, I need a waiter right now, I need a waiter you can really believe what I'm saying. <laughs> so unfortunately, my perfect waiter is not real, not at all, not yet. We're working on it. Um, so here's the reality. First of all, CPUs, nothing close to what I talked about. Um, the, the clock rates vary dynamically. You might have also heard this mentioned during the iOS talk earlier today. Uh, same thing is true on Linux. Um, uh, Apple does have a, a slightly um, a simpler CPU architecture, I believe they're using a dual core and uh, a, a with, uh, whereas with the ones often used in Android tend to have more cores, so there's more variation in performance. Um, but basically, we've got pr problems in terms of performance. The, uh, there's thermal throttling, whenever it gets hot, the, the, uh, it has to shut down cores or turn down the, uh, the clock rates. It can go into um, idle and suspend states to, to save battery. Um, there are these big dot little architectures where you have different kinds of ARM processors on the same chip, some of which are faster than others. Uh, and then even once the, the clocks are running at the desired rate, uh, there's these page table lookups, page table misses, cache misses, all sorts of things like that, which result in unpredictable performance. And then similarly on the operating system side, um, we're using real-time scheduling, which theoretically should be perfect, but it's not and a lot of reasons, I won't go into all of them, but primarily they're, they're bugs, they're performance-related bugs. Uh, one of the worst of them is when interrupts are disabled or preemption is disabled, and then uh, a task wake-up can occur, you know, a millisecond, two milliseconds, sometimes even worse, late. So I won't go through all these problems, but um, the end result is that we get jitter, a different kind of jitter than was talked about during the previous talk where we were talking about uh, MIDI 
event jitter. Here we're talking about task wake-up jitter. So let's see what that looks like in terms of our performance graphs. Um, now, I happen to dance Lindy Hop, and one of the other names for Lindy Hop is Jitterbug. And so what I'm going to show you here is some Jitterbugs, but not the good kind of Jitterbug. <laughs> These are the very bad Jitterbugs. Uh, the, that slight irregular movement, if it were only slight, ah, if it were only slight, but unfortunately it can be much worse than slight. Okay, so remember earlier I showed you an almost perfect histogram. The way to read this is on the um, x-axis is how many milliseconds between task wake-ups. So here we have three, here we have four, and then this is a log scale on the y-axis for how many times that event happened. Um, this is a pretty darn good histogram. These are progressively worse and worse histograms. Uh, on this one, we can see um, we got quite a few that instead of being four or five, were three or six. And the result of that is you have less CPU available to do your, your DSP computation. So at least that one on the left is manageable. At least you can do some work. But as you look at the, the middle and the right ones, it's, it, you know, you're not just going to have to limit the amount of voices you use, you're actually going to hear glitches. And this is basically terrible. Here's what a glitch looks like. This is in the time domain. Any of you all seen this? <laughs> Bill's seen it. <laughs> You've certainly heard it. And what it sounds like in the, uh, is, is you know, a pop or a click or something like that. And it'll completely destroy a performance. You know, you're do, you're, as my colleague Don used, likes to say, if you're doing a DJ performance and it glitches once during the whole set, then you know, your set is basically ruined because people are going to start storming out of the room. Uh, and it shows up as a, a bunch of high frequency peaks uh, instead of the, the actual desired, in this case, sine wave. Okay, so how do we correct for that? Well, the, the easiest way is just to increase your latency. By making your buffers bigger, you can um, hide the fact that the jitter is occurring on the task wakeups, and that decreases the probability of glitches. Uh, but to get your glitches down to zero, um, you can see that you would have to add quite a bit of latency. For example, if I go back to this slide here, um, on the left, I don't really have to increase latency at all to get rid of glitches, but on the one on the right, I would have to increase latency by, you know, perhaps an extra 10 milliseconds or so to cover up those jitters. So what are we going to do about this? Well, we're not standing still. Um, the first thing that we're doing is working on performance testing tools so that we can find these performance bugs, find these jitter bugs, and catch them early so that we have time enough to actually fix them. Um, the first one is that you've probably seen before, we've had this tool out for about three years, is these uh, loopback plugs. And we can use it to not only measure latency, but also to measure glitches. Um, the next one, which we're going into production uh, right now, we just built 200 of them, is something called Walt, which will do the same thing, except instead of measuring one-way latency, it measures, I'm sorry, instead of measuring two-way latency, it will measure one-way latency. It can also measure uh, MIDI latency, MIDI jitter. It can measure touch latency, touch jitter, uh, display latency. It's sort of an all-in-one toolbox here. Uh, unfortunately, I d didn't bring any this time, but um, if any of you are interested in this, please see me afterwards, and I can arrange to, to share some of these tools with you. And then the last one is one that's being created right now by Phil and, and Don, and it basically tries to answer the question, how many voices can you synthesize you know, on, a, on a given CPU, uh, given the, the wide variability in CPU performance? The catch being it has to be reliable, so no glitches. And then on the Linux front, we're doing several things to try to increase the reliability of Linux uh, task wake up and the, the CPU throughput. Um, first of all, we're trying to stay closer to upstream Linux because the upstream Linux on x86 processors tends to have much better uh, reliability and performance. Um, un unfortunately, right now, uh, each of the SOC vendors, the chip vendors, has their own Linux tree. 
and it tends to lag behind and have various customizations, device drivers and things like that, uh, which may have, uh, have performance bugs in them. So we're trying to work with our SOC vendors to stay closer. Um, certainly fixing these performance bugs, using these performance tools will help us to find the bugs earlier so we can catch them. And then um, working on new scheduling and, and CPU governor algorithms. And finally, to, to realize that real time is, is not a panacea, it's, it's, it's a precious resource. And it's not just audio who wants it, everybody wants it. You know, VR wants it, uh, uh, graphics wants it, games want it, and we have to really treat it like the, the precious resource that it is. Okay, the, I think the most important thing though is what I call, uh, I learned this from Qualcomm, uh, they call it sociology, which is basically system on chip uh, interactions. It's talking to each other, conferences like this, um, you know, working together to share uh, our best practices and learn from each other. Um, there's things that you can do too. Um, number one, the most important thing is to share your workloads with us. I know that Roly has been really good about that and sharing their workloads. If any of you have any characteristic workloads, um, please give them to us, especially Phil would, would love to have those workloads because we need performance benchmarks that model real behavior. Um, we have our own benchmarks, but we're not sure that they're exactly like yours. And the closer we can make our benchmarks to, you, to the real thing, the better. Um, using a, an actual app is sometimes okay as a workload, but it, it's a little bit hard to, to, to deal with. So if you have a, a model of the app, that, that can be sometimes a little bit easier for us, in, at least in the beginning. Um, Next thing, it, you, you may already be doing this, especially if you, um, if you attend the talk, I believe it's tomorrow, about uh, audio best practices, but definitely you wanna separate your performance sensitive audio code from the rest of your system. So like don't do audio on your UI thread or vice versa. Uh, be careful where you do logging. Um, and don't assume that perfect CPU or kernel. You may be lucky and you may do your development on one of those CPUs that happens to have perfect performance, but the chances are that when you run out in the field, you're gonna find a CPU that's not so perfect. So make trade-offs. The latency is now down in the region where it's not quite where we wanna be. It's not quite 10 millisecond round trip, but 15 millisecond is close enough to that that sometimes it's okay now to increase latency in order to improve your reliability. Um, sometimes that's better to have just a slight pause than to have a glitch. So we have a YouTube channel where we have a bunch of videos on this subject of performance and what we're doing about it, what you can do it, and things like that. Uh, unfortunately, I forgot to get a bit.ly link, but just search for, uh, <laughs> type that in quick. <laughs> just search for this high performance audio. Um,